anytime you disagree with anything, anytime you think they're going too far or going in a direction that's bad, or I even argue they're the ones that are being regressive. Yeah. Because they're the ones that want to categorize everyone in the box and to <clears throat> eliminate the concept of the colorblind society and all these other things. Anytime you push back against anything, they say, oh, well, see, this is really a subconscious, unconscious desire because you just don't want to give power up to other people that don't look like you. And you're really just a prejudiced bigot. It's all dog whistles. It's all magic words in secret hand wave motions that I can use to make it so that whatever you say, as long as you disagree with me, you're a racist. Yeah. There's really two different styles of bigotry. They express the same prejudice, but they're very different in tone. I'll call the two styles- Oh no, tone policing now. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Whole new level. Direct bigotry and indirect bigotry. Direct bigotry is openly contemptuous. It's a bigotry manifested in slurs and outright discrimination and demonizing the target group and calls for shunning, subordination, or even violence. Whereas indirect bigotry manifests as concern. What the fuck? <laughs> How? How such? I can't even show concern for people. I'm telling well, you, you just like fuck it. You just gotta be like fuck it. It's weird because like this is the video that contrapoints seems to just go off the deep end and completely, fully embrace wokeistan bullshit. Because like under indirect bigotry, we have law and order, free <laughs> speech, free speech, political correctness, cancel, cancel culture. It, it's, it's just like with the OK sign. It's like, yeah, there are people who are legitimate racist or bigots who will pretend and couch their language using these terms. But then the problem is, is that instead of you and the activists doing their fucking job and actually working to ferret out what is real and what is not real, they just say, oh, we just have to throw away these terms because the bigots are using it. You just must submit to us completely. I, it's, how do you show genuine concern, though? How do you have a conversation about freedom of speech if you're, well, no, if you're you, genuinely concerned about the it? Only way to, the only way to do that is, is if your concern and your use of free speech completely conforms with their ideology. If there's any disagreement oh, okay. so if you're, that whoa, proves... Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, if if you disagree with them, you, that alone proves that you're the baddie, just on the basis of your disagreement. It doesn't matter what your reason is. It doesn't matter what reasons you give. It doesn't matter how carefully you word it. You're the baddie because you disagree. So it's you can that simple. It's black so, and white. So we can have a conversation about freedom of speech as long as that conversation is in the context of policing other people's speech. Right. Or as long as it's you know yeah of course I believe in free speech you know. Uh, trans activists should be able to go wherever they want and to whatever school they want and uh, say, you know, say whatever they want, do whatever, yeah, and they, say want. whatever they want yeah. and promote, you know, their ideology. <laughs> of course I believe in free speech. That's, that's the only acceptable range of, of, you know, discussion. This is awful. Or debate about a host of proxy issues. It's often defensive in tone rather than offensive. Frequently the claim is that a once needed liberation movement has now gone too far, that it's now the activists who are the new oppressors, who are disturbing law and order with violent and chaotic protests, who are victimizing and silencing innocent people by calling them bigots, who are infiltrating the media and replacing good old fashioned entertainment with politically correct propaganda. And of course, ordinary people are too intimidated to speak out against it because cancel culture is out of control and free speech is under attack. She, she's literally saying that like a cohesive argument is bigotry now. Yeah. The, the, the counter is, argument is bigotry. <laughs> well, and this is like doubly gross because Contra herself has been attacked <laughs> yes. so often uh, for all these things. Because she used to have opinions that didn't completely conform yes. with the Wokistan people. And now she's like, well, fuck all these arguments that I have to use to defend myself. Because people I don't like also use those arguments. So, you know. Wow. Wow. This is complete conformity. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm surprised she doesn't have a Pepsi ad in here. The direct bigot is always frothing at the mouth, ranting and raving about predators, perverts, invaders, rapists, brutish animals, vermin, rats, roaches, contagions. Whereas 
The indirect bigot is always defending something, always a knight in shining armor, defending women, defending the children, defending marriage, defending freedom, defending the family, defending our values, so defending, defending common sense. Defending trans people, defending oppressed minorities, defending all the poor people that are being oppressed by the patriarchy and the hierarchy. Is this a good yeah. idea? Just, I mean, you're really pushing people towards like nihilism, towards like the fucking attitude. Yeah, that's basically. It's pointless to defend any of these people. Yeah, yeah. Th Every, this is everyone what, I mean, for themselves. Remember, it's like James Lindsay, who, you know, to be tr to be honest, has been saying crazy shit on Twitter recently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he said something that wasn't crazy at all, and now people are attacking him for being anti an anti semite in a completely dishonest way. Yeah, because he said that, you know, he's made the point that. It doesn't make sense for Jews to be on board with wokistan nonsense because it breeds two forms of anti it, it further breeds it increases two forms of anti-Semitism, which is that there's a lot of anti-Semitism that's just increasing on the left mm -hmm. because they view it either through the the eyes of Pakistan, I mean of Palestine, or the eyes of Capitalism. Jews are white people and they're succeeding in society and they're oppressing minorities. Mm -hmm. Or on the right. You know, the right has this idea that like, oh, it's the Jews that are secretly, secretly, you know, pushing all this wokistan nonsense on society and, and, you know, infiltrating and blah, blah, blah. And he, his point was that it doesn't make sense for Jews to support woke stuff because it, it basically increases the feeling on both sides of the aisle towards mm -hmm. anti-Semitism. And then all these people, these really dishonest people are saying, oh, my God, James Lindsay is saying that Jews are responsible for anti-Semitism. You know who Blaming else said the that? Victim. Hitler. Yeah, yeah Hitler totally. said that too. Oh my God, James Lindsay is promoting Nazi talking. It was like, it was just crazy. Yeah. God, I hate the dishonesty. I really do. Yeah, it's, it's Adam's Law in action right there. The th it's so bad because they, I, they probably think they're being fucking honest. They're just idiots. Yeah. Oh man, sad. Very sad. That's defending. Mission. Defending civilization itself. Defending God. He's all powerful, but he could really use your help, Mary. I think a lot of people take a borderline heroic view of themselves. And indirect bigotry flatters that self image. Indirect bigotry. That, that's everyone. It often replaces the actual people it targets with some big abstract concept. Instead of Jewish people, they claim to be against Zionist occupied government. Instead of women, they claim to hate feminazis or the friend zone. Gay people are. Friended call out, nice. Are depersonified as. <clears throat> so, wait, <laughs> she says. Well, I'm confused. Oh, here's it interesting. Okay. So she says indirect bigotry. Jewish people is Zionist occupied government. Mm -hmm. So is she, this is, this is one of those interesting things where you don't realize if she accidentally uh, pulled the wool, the curtain back by accident, or oh, really? was it intentional? Mask off? Well, the mask because fell? The maybe the, well, but unintentionally, because yes, it's true that the alt writers, they talk about how American government is a Zionist occupied government. I've literally never heard that term. Well, I've heard it. Oh, okay. And but here's what's weird about this: the leftists say that too, not only about America, but about Israel. Mm -hmm. And they always say, "I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm anti-Zionism." Mm -hmm. So is Contra willing to? Is is that a is that a dog whistle of bigotry on the left? You know, remember Ooh, when? Interesting point. Yeah, is, is she pro-Palestine? Right, remember Probably when? Probably so. Um, which who was it? One of the squad people was like, "Oh, you know, the support of Israel is all about the Benjamins." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I everyone's like, "Well, that's, was. that's a dog whistle. That's a dog whistle." So that's like, it's so it's weird. That's what I'm saying. It's weird that she put Zionist occupied government because that could swing in both directions on the political spectrum. The get trans people become transgenderism, gender ideology, trans activists. With the there you go. See, I can't use the word trans activist God to accurately it. describe a group of people that are act that are advocating for trans issues. I don't even. I can't use a word, a neutral word to describe it. That's a that's a form of bigotry. There you have it. Yeah, I guess we just have to continue. 
we need to dream up like 500 words and keep them secret. <laughs> so we constantly, oh, that one's dead. Okay, we got this one here. Boom. That's right. What we'll do is we'll just create like a load of nonsense words to describe mm-hmm. concepts. There and you then go. every time we switch, we'll just put put it on the screen. We'll have like a giant, like a keyword, <laughs> you know, catalog that explains like, oh, when I use the word little snaps, I'm referring to trans activists, but that word is deemed bad. So when I say bliffle snaps, <laughs> I'm talking about those people. Bliffle snaps. That's fun yeah. to say, man. That's a those great word. Damn bliffle snaps. They're out of control. The Going into snaps? our schools with their bliffle snap ideology, <laughs> trying to turn the kids into bliffle snaps. Bliffle snaps. This, this is a wonderful idea. Yeah. I think we should fully embrace this. God. Bliffle snap. I'm trying to think what it might even be, but. It's it's just too it's too terrible, too disgusting to even imagine. <laughs> They're really against is equality, but they don't say that. In fact, they may not even think it. But they tell on themselves when they react with instinctive hostility to anyone who agitates for change. It's not racist to think that Black Lives Matter thugs shouldn't disrespect the national anthem. A book called The Anatomy of Prejudices. Another book! Oh my god, it's killing me. It's killing me. Although she is just picking books that are like evil books. She's not picking any. Is this book a good book or an evil I book? I have no clue. Let's see. This by Elizabeth Young Brule really helped me with this video. One of the points she made. Oh, it's a good book. She likes it. This book is okay. This one's approved. <laughs> is that a lot of the time, bigotry is backlash. Ideologies of desire are, generally, backlashes against movements of equality. They are regressive prejudices that reinstate inequalities and distinctions when the force of movements for equality has been registered and, often unconsciously, rejected. Pre- the, the problem, the, the evil, wicked problem with, with that statement is that it's true, that can be true, but of course, as we know, that's the excuse that the locust sand gives for any sort of backlash. Anytime you disagree with anything, anytime you think they're going too far or going in a direction that's bad, or I even argue they're the ones that are being regressive. Yeah, because they're the ones that want to categorize everyone in the box and to <laughs> eliminate the concept of the colorblind society and all these other things. Anytime you push back against anything. They say, oh, well, see, this is really a subconscious, unconscious desire because you just don't want to give power up to other people that don't look like you and you're really just a prejudiced bigot. It's all dog whistles. It's all magic words and secret hand wave motions that I can use to make it so that whatever you say, as long as you disagree with me, you're a racist. Yeah. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.